Lieutenant. Four minutes. Right. Are the interceptors ready? Yes, sir. We've been on red alert since 0600 hours. If we do lose contact, you'll have to play it by ear. Yes, sir. Three minutes, Lieutenant. It's a feeling of helplessness I can't take. Sunspot activity is the perfect cover for you, Fez. But do you think they'll try anything? I think you can lay odds on it. Give me the surface camera. Yes, Lieutenant. 50 seconds. Interference ratio 207 increasing. Interference level rising to critical, Commander. Right. Well, it looks like we're going to have a communication blackout. Sound of vision breaking up. We'll keep the line open and test signal every 60 seconds. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Give me the surface. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Radar trace bearing 184, range 20 miles. Camera 3. the interceptors. Interceptors immediate launch. Immediate launch. Fifteen miles. miles. Congratulations to the interceptor pilots. They didn't get near it. What? It disintegrated. No apparent reason. Thank you, Lieutenant. Contact Paul Foster. And check on the next available lunar flight. You're going up to Moon Base? Yes. I want to know why a UFO gets within four miles of Moon Base and destroys itself. Mobile 2 to control. Yes, Commander. We've completed the search in this area and can find no UFO wreckage. Nor are Conroy and Dale making out. Well, they found a possible crash location, but nothing positive. They're out on the surface now, taking a closer look. Roger, control out. What are you hoping to find? If it did disintegrate in flight, the debris would have produced a large number of small craters over a wide area. Yes, and the moon's surface has been pockmarked by millions of years of meteorites. Yes, I know that. But that UFO got within four miles of moon base, Paul. Perfect position to attack, and then it explodes. Why? It's a good question. Let's hope Mobile One comes up with the answer. Uh, well, what do you think? I don't know. It's hard to be sure. Straker's going to want to know. Uh, you're in charge of this buggy, old son. Thank you. Maybe the instrument recordings will tell us more. 
let's get back to base. Right. Control to two. Go ahead, control. Mobile one is about to dock. All right, we're on our way back to. Out. Home, James, and don't spare the horses. Ah, just a piece of moon rock. Picked it up, we were out there on the surface. Hey, you remember Harrison? I thought he'd go crazy when he found one of these. <laughs> he thought he'd find a genuine Kohinoor diamond. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> and I'll never forget that look on his face when he found out it was worthless. <laughs> yeah, well, it'd make a nice paperweight. Let's see, Francoise, Denis, Sylvia. Sylvia, baby. <laughs> Look, I think I'll get down to control and see if they figured out those... ...recordings? Hi, baby.
How are you, Nina? Let's sit down. Could have been worse. Nothing broken. Do you feel like talking about it? Well, sure. Conroy came into the control. He just stood there, staring. He looked bewildered and frightened, as if he didn't know where he was. Well, what happened then? Well, I asked him what's the matter, what's wrong, something like that. And then? Well, he struck out and the girls tried to grab him. Everything happened so fast. He was very strong. Out of his mind. I'm sure he didn't know. Didn't know what? Who he was hitting. He just didn't know who we were. Still at it, sir? Yes, and it doesn't make any more sense now than it did four hours ago. Everyone who came into contact with Conroy reports more or less the same thing. Look at this. Berserk. Out of his senses. Didn't seem to recognize me. Fired at me indiscriminately with no reason at all. Conroy's medical report of three weeks ago. And? Full clearance. What about his stress factor? 98%, the near-perfect astronaut. He'd been in a couple of tight situations over the years, always kept his head, never been anywhere near cracking up. Until now. We'll leave for Earth at 1,400 hours, Paul. I think I know someone else who wants some answers. General Henderson. How long has he been waiting? Long enough to work up a lava. Just what I need at 8.30 in the morning. Thank you. I could always phone down with some excuse to get you off the hook. Well, can you think of a good one that might do the trick? Fire in the studio? No. It would take at least an earthquake to get one angry general off my back. Nuclear attack? That might do it if it was a big one. Colonel. Good morning. Where is he? Oh, thank you. Ah, I need moral support. Morning, Viva. Good morning, Colonel. General Henderson. Mrs. Baker, I ought to kick your ass. Do you know uh, Colonel Lake? Oh, yes, of course you do. Now, where's that report? I don't have it ready yet. Baker, the committee meets in three days' time. I need your report and all the figures. I've been busy. Look, it takes money to run Shadow. A hell of a lot of money. And we're asking the committee for even more this time. Well, that's your bag, General. You get the money, I run the store. Straker, they are after blood. My job is on the line. Not that that's important. But if I go, you won't win any popularity polls up here. That sounds like a threat, General. Not from me. We could both walk out tomorrow. And don't think I hadn't considered it. But you, you got a monkey on your back. Dedication. Think about it. You want me to reprogram the computer to get out the finance figures? He is right, you know. Yes, he's right, right. Sometimes being wrong right is harder. No, let the computer run. I have to know what happened to Conroy. An immediate for Captain Saunders. Captain Saunders reported as well. Hi, Beaver. Captain Saunders. No. Oh, Beaver. Mm -hmm. Did those spares for the G6 arrive yet? Uh, afraid not. Well, they were due yesterday. Only one shipment arrived yesterday, stationary. Then get it moving, eh, Beaver? It's a joke. Stationary? Due to a power failure. Beaver? Oh. There will be no more available for the next two hours. How's it going, Paul? Well, it looks like the area Dale and Conroy investigated was the UFO crash location, but uh, we're still waiting for the computer to confirm. What's wrong? Beaver? Do you hear me? What's wrong? Down the gun. Who did this? 
Neither James. He's out of his mind. Pass the alarm. Control. This is Control. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is Captain James. Captain James, listen. Listen carefully. I want you to stay where you are. Do you understand? Do Just stay exactly. Can, Can you hear me, Captain? What the hell are they doing? Right. We are here. He killed the guard here. Commander. He just called up control. Where from? Corridor 12. Let's go. Captain James, can you hear me? Captain James. This is Straker. It looks like he's heading for the control room. Give me the map. I want you to station guards at the end of corridors 14 and 6 and seal all exits. You two, take that corridor. Lieutenant. Have we sealed off the complex? Yes, sir. But he's just killed a guard near the medical center. Well, he must have doubled back. Yeah, but he's still heading this way. Tell everyone not to shoot unless absolutely necessary. I want to take him alive. Control. Control? He's right outside. He's in the corridor, right outside control. Ball. Captain James. I gave you an order. Go on, let's rush you. No, Paul. Let's sit it out. Give the word. Die. All right, Paul. They have no choice. He's already killed twice. Now! What a mess. If only I'd thought, waited. Maybe I... I don't know. You weren't to know. How could you? Well, that doesn't make it any easier. Half a million miles in Navy jets before he was 25. Ten years as a top astronaut. You brought a space capsule down with a shattered hip. Saved the crew. Best command pilot Shadow ever had. And why does a man like that suddenly lose all sense of reality and start seeing aliens? 
Same pattern as Conroy. Are we any nearer to finding an answer there? Well, the autopsy found nothing. But the computer confirms that they had located the UFO crash area. Well, that's no help to us. Beaver hadn't been near a UFO in almost two years. Well, it's too much of a coincidence. There must be a connection. A link. I need some air. series they're filming on five and six. Oh, yes. Well, he's picked a bad time. I'm sorry, but he insisted. That's all right, Miss Elin. Well, I finally get to see you. You're a hard man to pin down it, Straker. Well, I've been pretty tied up just recently, Howard. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. Yes, haven't we all? Ah. Well, what's your problem? You're the one with the problem. Am I? The series. You have seen it, of course. Well, yes, but uh, not as often as I would have liked. Well, unless something's done, it's heading for big trouble. Fortunately, though, I have a solution. No. Oh. I want script approval. <laughs> now, Howard, you know we can't do that. Mr. Straker, the series is going to pot. The scripts are old and hackneyed. The entire production is lifeless and trite. I don't think it's doing anything for you. I know it's not doing anything for me. All right, let's talk about it. I didn't come here to bargain, Ed. I want script approval. It's not in your contract. Ah, uh, well, of course, you could hold me to my contract, but, you know, I'm getting these terrible bad headaches recently. Headaches? Mm. I wonder what could be causing that. Well, it could be eye strain or reading a lot of bad scripts. I mean the kind of headaches keep me off the floor a couple of mornings a week. Understand? Yes, I understand blackmail. Blackmail? I never said anything about blackmail. I'm talking about migraine headaches. Well, why don't you leave it with me, Howard? I'm sure I understand. I'm not sure you do. If you think I'm bluffing, try me. All right, I'm calling. No script approval, Howard. You know, these headaches that you've been suffering from, they could be caused by a swelling between the ears. Shouldn't you be in Theater 7 looking at your rushes? Have a look at rushes tomorrow, Mr. Straker. Control to Sky 4. Continue on present course. What's happening, Paul? Sky One's closing. We should know any second. Control, I'm in search area. UFO sighting negative. Returning to base, ETA 1400 hours. Thank you, Sky One. Conroy's personal effects. Have they been checked? One of the last things Beaver James did. Oh, and here's a directive for you to sign. Yeah. Replacement interceptor for moon base. I wonder how much that's going to cost. Talking of money, uh, General Henderson's on his way to see you. Yes, I'm sure he is. Well, what's this? Notes for a story? Oh, apparently Conroy used to write westerns. Suppose it helped him pass the time on moon base. Cowboys. Beaver James thought he saw aliens. See, the way Conroy fought, you think that maybe in his mind he thought he saw... Straker. General Henderson is here, sir. 
Thank you. Send him in. I'll uh, leave this one to you. Thank you. General. Commander. General. Close the door. I had a report on astronaut Conroy. It didn't make a lot of sense, but these things happen. And now I get one on Captain James, but it makes even less. Well, if you're looking for an explanation, I don't know. The committee just won't buy that streaker. You're going to want some answers. You're sending me up there with nothing. What do you expect me to do? Stand up and give them a couple of choruses of love and come back? We need more time. If we had managed to take James alive... Well, what do you mean? I killed him. You what? Get this gun. The one he had on Colonel Lake. It was empty. Oh, don't give me that unkind of streak of crud. If you can't stand the heat, you shouldn't be in the kitchen. You're making this personal. Any way you want. All right, General Almighty Henderson. Every man and woman in shadow is my responsibility. Oh, my gums bleed for you. They're highly trained, dedicated, often under tremendous stress. Oh, stop it, stop it. You make me cry. My God. I'm really seeing you for the first time. You don't care, do you? You really don't care. Stress, we're all under stress. Father Street and his bleating flock. Don't push me, Henderson. Chief! Look, somebody ought to take what, you. you? You haven't got the guts. Let's get back to realities. You're nothing but a bunch of spineless, gutless sheep. The lot of you. Nah, nah, nah. Cut! And print that. That was uh, very, very nice. How was it for you? Oh, okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. Fell all right, anyway. Because there's just one small point. Uh, I was thinking, you know when Howard says, um, uh, you making this personal, and I say, uh, Don't go away, Howard. Uh, you know, uh, uh, any way you want. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, I thought maybe I'd get that a bit stronger, you know? Okay, uh... I don't know what, we'll, we'll play in here, here. And cheat in the eye later. later. Mm -hmm. How about that? That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Yeah, I'll fix it up. So it's okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can try that. Try fit in with the. Uh... Yeah, we'll fit in with the. Oh, okay. All right, we'll pick it up from the same place, but keep the pace up. Mm -hmm. When you're ready. Rehearsal bell! Quiet, please. Right, keep the eye line straight ahead as we're cheating it. All right, Sylvia? Okay. And action, Grant. You're making this personal. Any way you want. See you later. Paul! Oh, my gum is bleeding for you. Oh, don't give me that unkind of streak of crud. If you can't stand the heat, you shouldn't be in the kitchen. They're highly trained, dedicated, often under tremendous stress. Oh, stop it, stop it. You won't need it until after lunch, Mr. Burton. If you want to leave the stage before the red light goes up. You're doing it for the first time. You don't care. You really don't care. Stress, stress. We're all under stress. Father Streeter and his bleeding flock. Don't push me. Sheep! Someone ought to. But you, you haven't got the guts. Look, let's get back to realities. You're nothing but a bunch of spineless, gutless sheep. The lot of you. Meh, meh, meh. I'm sorry, Mr. Byrne. Who are you? What? Who are you? Joe, I'm your stand-in, Mr. Byrne. I'm getting these terrible...
terrible bad headaches recently. You know, these headaches you've been suffering from, I think it's caused by a swelling. Hello? Yes, Mr. Byrne? I'm afraid Mr. Straker is engaged. I want to see him. I'll call you back. I'm afraid that's impossible. Shouldn't you be in Theatre 7, Mr. Byrne? They're showing your rushes. Mr. Byrne. Terrible. Bewildered and frightened. Why does a man like that suddenly lose all sense of reality? Cowboys. Beaver James thought he saw aliens. We'll have to start, sir. Second unit rushes are due at 12. 139, take two. Minister, this is Colonel Stringer. How do you do, sir? A shattering business, Colonel. The Prime Minister's already at Checkers. We'll be there in 30 minutes. We've been in constant communication with Paris, Moscow and Bonn during our visits. I think the British government's approval will be a formality. The evidence is absolutely conclusive. If I might join, sure just... Colonel. It may speed things up. Mind if I join you? Paul. Oh. oh, Mike's the name, remember? I've only been your co-star for two one, years. One, two, one. <laughs> John. Don't you like it? I think it'll make a great episode. Are you all right? That's me up there. That's my life. That was my son. Oh, the juvenile. Nice little actor. As I was saying, I think it'll make a great episode. One, four, seven, take four. Uh, action. How'd you make out with that model boat I sent you? I finished it. Do you want to see it? Hmm? The boat, Dad. Oh, sure. Bet I do. Wait for me, Dad. Mary. Hello, Mary. Hello, Ed. You're late. Yes. We were having such a great time, I thought an extra half hour. 
Could you make it a week later next month, say, the 18th? The 18th, yes, that'll be fine. Mary! Johnny wanted to show me something. I think you better go. I'll explain to Johnny. Right. Goodbye, Ed. My God, what's happening? Oh, John. John. Dad! No, look out, John, John! Ah, uh, Fred. Bombay, okay. one, four, nine, take two. And action. Mary. Mary. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! All right, cut it. Well, I've heard of method acting, but you take the coconut. What's got into you? You, you take my, my memories, my life, my soul, and stick it up on that screen. What's this, the star bit? It's make-believe. We're all in the same business. Pretty pictures for the masses, right? Listen, Paul. Mike. Mike, whatever your name is, it doesn't matter. You're part of a nightmare, this nightmare. All this. Everything I'm seeing, I know it's only in my own mind. What? They're trying to make me crack. Make me believe in the unreality. Conroy, Beaver James, they must have gone through the same thing. You've got to help me. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about you in my nightmare. I have to get back. I need your help. I need Paul Foster's help. You're crazy. Crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. Lights up, Mr. Byrne. So, uh, we'll have a nice strong reaction on where he throws the gun away, okay? Uh-huh. And, uh, what about a bit of fingers in the corners of the eyes for when you say you make me cry? <laughs> <laughs> bit pearl handlers. Okay, drop it. Right, turn over. Mark it. One, four, seven, take one. And action. You're making this personal. Any way you want. All right, All right, cut it. Will you please keep this stage quiet, Frank? Now we want absolute quiet, Mr. Byrne. The red light's up. All right, let's take it from the top. Over. Mark it. One, four, seven, take two. Bye, heart. Any way you want. Oh, my gums bleed for you. Oh, stop it, stop it. You're making me cry. My God, you know I'm... What the devil's going on here? Frank? Well, what can I do about it? The guy's crazy. OK, 
Okay, get the production manager. Get the production manager on the set. Okay, let's all sit down. How well are we keeping up with this schedule? We won't be off the set today at this rate. Right. Howard! If you're looking for explanations, I don't know. Howard, look, come and sit down. We need time. If we manage to take James alive. Howard, look, I... Uh... I killed him. Howard. This gun. The one he had on Colonel Lake. It was empty. Well, don't give me that study for streaker crud. If you can't stand the heat, you shouldn't be in the kitchen. You're making this personal? Any way you want. All right, General Almighty Henderson. Every man and woman in shadow is my responsibility. My gums bleed for you. They're highly trained. Dedicated, often under tremendous stress. No, stop it, stop it, you make me cry. My God, I'm really seeing you for the first time. You don't care, do you? You really don't care. Stress, we're all under stress. Father Straker and his bleating flock. Don't push me, Henderson. Sheep. You know, somebody ought to take... You? You haven't got the guts. Let's get back to realities. You're nothing but a bunch of spineless, gutless sheep to lie to you. Meh, meh, meh. Hold it. Paul? He suddenly seemed to regain control. I thought he was going to finish me. How do you feel? Did I cause all this? Well, uh, nothing too serious. The link. The link was a rock. Conroy must have found it somewhere near that UFO wreckage. It had some kind of... Uh, Hallucinatory power, it bent the mind of whoever touched it. Obviously alien. Yes, planted in some way by that UFO which crashed near Moon Base. A booby trap. Yes, aimed at the mind. Thank you.